Due to my getaway car. It's a car if it's on our turf. Now you're gonna pay for parking. Looking back on it, you might actually doubt that the Saints Row franchise story unfolded the way that it did. It kind of sounds like a fever dream at this point, as the Saints charted their way across fictional US cities, ascending to the highest office in government, battling aliens and tramping their way out of hell. It's the kind of tale that you might expect to be waved away as the protagonist wakes up in the shower. That's not how this Saints Row reboot starts though, but honestly it could have done. Instead, it's a full-on reimagining of what the Saints are, where they are, and how they rise to power. But first things first, you have to decide who you are. The character creator in Saints Row is impressively broad, feeling like you can create pretty much any kind of person that you might conceivably want to embody. Yes, that means that you can play as an incredibly generic white guy if you really want to. There's a good selection of presets to pick from though, including the boss that has led all of the marketing campaigns thus far, and for those without a real idea of what they want to look like in-game, they can provide a really good jumping off point. From there you can dive in with the body shape being determined by a triangular slider that you can push from skinny and lithe to muscly or something a bit more hench like Spider-Man's nemesis Kingpin. But then you have so many further options that can determine if you're really well defined, if you've got loads of popping out veins, you can add plentiful tattoos, tons of different hairstyles, scars, makeup which can be asymmetrical, and so, so much more. Your character look doesn't even have to be particularly sensible. You've got things like vampire teeth and elf ears if you really want to go completely fantasy RPG with your character design. Jesus Get past the game's intro and all of this can then be changed up on the fly with an in-game smartphone app. Once your boss has been decided, you're then thrown into the meat grinder. You see, the saints don't even exist yet when the game starts. Instead, you're just a new recruit in the PMC of Marshall Defense Industries. Admittedly, you're a surprisingly adept and survivable one, but you're starting on the lowest rungs of this organization. Your best friends in this life? Well, they're relatively low level at Marshall's rival organizations within the city of Santa Eleso. You've got the Los Panteros and the Anarchist Idols. Between your collected, measly gangster pay packets, it's actually a bit of a struggle to make rent, and so you take on a daft daylight robbery on a loan shark. The ensuing chase by the cops leads you through many of the city's outskirts as you try to make your getaway. From all the marketing build-up, you might have had the impression that this would lead almost directly into one of you having the bright idea that you strike out for yourselves. But that actually comes a good two to three hours into the game, depending on if you stick to just the main missions or start to dive into some of the side stuff. Each one of these founding members has to reach the place, the personal peril, to realise that their friendship and their bond is stronger than their commitment to their gangs that they actually have the skills and the ability to set up their own gang and start to stake a claim to the city for themselves. Getting there runs you through a bunch of fun scenarios that really mix things up with the different gangs interacting and fighting one another. At times it feels like you're stuck right in the middle as all three are battling away, and there's nice characterization running through all of this as your group of friends are trying to look out for each other amidst the chaotic fighting between the gangs. There'll often be a little phone call to give a quick heads up that a gang is about to strike and you've got to defend yourself. Saints Row doesn't really revolutionise its third person shooting for these combat situations, but then it doesn't really need to. At this early point in this game, you're generally making do with the standard kind of assault rifles, pistols, and shotguns, that kind of thing, with the occasional flashes of the different and the more distinct being thrown into the mix. The main variety in the moment to moment at this early point comes from the enemies that you're facing. Los Panteros are more about bruising encounters as they come at you and they can really soak up quite a bit of damage with their specials, whilst the idols come in large numbers and have special units that deflect incoming fire with spinning glow stick type things. Marshall, of course being a PMC, rocks up with high-end military tech. 
You need to get stuck in though. You can regain chunks of your health by performing finishing moves on enemies, and there's also special abilities that you'll have a lot of fun using on all kinds of enemies. The first one that you'll unlock is the Pineapple Express, a move that has you grab an enemy, shove a grenade up their bum, of course, and then throw them back at another gaggle of enemies that you can find nearby. It's the daft kind of Saints Row action that you really expect to see. You also get some of that classic Saints Row excess through the side hustles and the criminal enterprises that you'll need to complete in order to seize control of different parts of the world. Some will have you post bad business reviews online and then deal with waves of gangsters who turn up because they're angry at you damaging a business's reputation. Others will have you riding shotgun for someone else wanting to run a hit, and then you've got classics like mayhem and insurance fraud to keep you occupied as well. Speaking of riding shotgun, this brings me to one of the new gameplay twists, the ability to ride on top of a vehicle so that you can use bigger and better guns when firing back on enemies. There's also the new car ramming mechanic which violently swerves into other cars and deals damage depending on how fast you're traveling through the world. Oh, and one mission had me grab a shipping container and then drag it around the world, swinging it back and forth to thwack into chasing enemies before I could deliver it back to Jim Rob's mechanics. Of course, this is nothing to some of the way, way over set pieces that happen through the story missions. The overarching narrative beats might feel pretty tame in comparison to Saints Row 4 blowing up the planet, but the scripted moments here are right up there with some of the craziest stuff that the series has ever featured. After the first couple of hours and having reached the point where you've founded the saints and set up their headquarters in a rundown church, there's a great sense for how this reimagining is handling the series' legacy for wild excess and needing a fresh start that is more grounded. This is the new take on the Saints Row origin story, but it's not lost its edge and I cannot wait to see where it goes through the rest of their rise to power. Saints Row is just about a month away from release. It's out on the 23rd of August across PS5, Xbox Series XS, PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Google Stadia. I hope that you've enjoyed this quick look at the game's early parts of the campaign, and it won't be very long before we're able to dive deeper into this game and deliver a review to you as well. So make sure to click the like button, subscribe, all of the usual YouTube things, and also keep tabs on thesixthaxis.com for more news about everything to do with video games. Hopefully we will see you again soon. Goodbye! Well, at least we've got a cool logo. I'll take it off the whiteboard.